Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa bihi nasta'inu ala umuri dunia wa din. Wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidil mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabil ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Let's praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us in this blessed gathering of knowledge. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah ila atib. Subhanallah al-Adim Respected brothers in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us In Surah Al-Qasas A beautiful story And this is the story Of the birth of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam As we know Was born during a time Of difficulty It was a time When Fir'aun had a dream and according to their interpretation, a child born to a slave of Bani Israel would overthrow him from power. Due to that interpretation, he gave a standing instruction to his soldiers that should there be a baby infant born, baby boy who was born, he should be killed immediately. This was the Instruction given by Fir'aun. By the takdir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam was born during, at the same time, the instruction came out. The mother of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam was pregnant and she gave birth to a baby boy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then inspires the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam by saying, by giving her a revelation to say, uh, nurse him, that means breastfeed him, Musa alayhi salam, and when you fear for him, put him into a basket and into a river and do not fear or grieve, we will certainly return you to him and make him one of the messengers. This is the ayah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the mother of Musa alayhi salam, Two commands. The first command is breastfeed him and should you fear him. The baby boy is born and the soldiers are walking around. She is trying her best to protect the baby which is Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And when there came a point where she fears that she has no control over Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's safety, she follows the instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which says, put him into a basket and into a river. The command is, number one, breastfeed him. And number two, put him in a basket and throw him into a river. The basket that she got was not proven to be waterproof. It is not windproof. And she just got a basket and she put the baby into the basket and let it flow in the river. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives her two advice. The two advice is, do not be afraid and do not be sad. Do not be afraid of anything, of the safety of the boy, and do not be sad that you are parting from him. This is the two advice, and Allah makes two promises to her. He will be written back to you, and that, he will be a messenger. Subhanallah. Beautiful advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two command to breastfeed him and throw him into the river. Two advice, don't be sad and don't worry about him. And two promise, we will return him back and he will be a messenger. Subhanallah. The mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the time came to throw him into the river, she just threw him into the river. But then again, as a human being, when she was doing this action, she was following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But suddenly, when she saw that the boy was floating in the water, she came to realize that she is losing her child. 
this is where we need to look at the ayah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, لَوْلَا أَرَّبَتْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, suddenly the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam felt that the baby is going and she was about to shout. She was about, about to shout for the safety of the kid. If she had shouted, the soldiers would have got the kid. But Allah says, if we have not strengthened the heart of the mother of Musa, subhanallah, Allah gave the strength to the heart of Mu- the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and she withdraw her anxiety. And this is where the anxiety came, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the strength in the heart, and she withdraw the anxiety and ask her daughter, the sister of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, to follow where the basket is going. And in the end, it ended into the place nobody wants into the family of Fir'aun, into the hands of the wife of Fir'aun. And when the child lands into the hands of Fir'aun, she got even more scared that it's finished. But then again, the promise of Allah is there. He will return back to you and he is a messenger. And what happened was, he, Allah says in the Quran, we made him, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, refuse all the wetness who came to breastfeed him and this is where the sister of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam will tell the family of Fir'aun shall I direct you to a person who can bring him up and take good care of him that is her mother so the promise is fulfilled respected brothers I just want to bring you to this ayah of the Quran a very important message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if we had not strengthened her heart Strengthening of the heart. Respect the brothers, you and me and our friends, we have problems and when we sit around and when we discuss, sometimes your problem can be very small. My problem can be very big. But Alhamdulillah, I can handle my problem but you, having a smaller problem than me, are not able to handle the problem. Handle the problem meaning to say you lose your sleep over the problem, you're not able to concentrate on your life. Okay? Does that mean that I am better than you and that iman is, my iman is stronger than you? No. From this ayah of the Quran, it says that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives strength to the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives strength to the heart. If a person is not able to get out from his situation and he's in a state of depression or anxiety, it is because the heart is not strengthened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you two examples. The first example of Nabi Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Yaqub alayhi salam. Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam lost his son. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. At a young age, how many years did he grieve? How many years did he cry that he lost the son? He cried for so long until Yusuf became the minister of Egypt and that when the other sons came to Ya'qub and say, are you going to die grieving about Yusuf alayhi salam? Meaning to say, Ya'qub alayhi salam is not able to get over the loss of Yusuf alayhi salam. He was crying for how many years? Because the heart is not strengthened. The strength is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go back to the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. The sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and were not able to take it. Umar radiallahu ta'ala was the first one who couldn't take the news that the Prophet had passed away. And one of them was Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an couldn't stay in Medina anymore after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every area that he went, he kept reminding of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he went to Asham. And in Sham, he stayed there for a time and he returned back to Medina. And in Medina, when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and saw him and he asked, Ya Bilal, are you here to give the azan as you used to give azan during the time of the Prophet alayhi salam? And he said, no, I'm not here to give the azan. Then he met the grandson of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and Huma. And they asked him, Ya Bilal, are you here to give the azan as you used to give the azan during the Prophet alayhi salam? He says, no. He hugged them. 
when he hugged them, he got the smell of Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. He got reminded of him. And eventually he agreed to give the azan. And he went to the mimbar and he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The whole of Medina was running out from their house. Halbu isna Rasulullah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be sent back to us. Once they heard the voice of Bilal, they got reminded. The whole of Medina came out crying as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam been given back to us. And they saw Bilal giving the azan. And he couldn't control his emotion. And he almost did not complete his azan. Respected brothers, the message is very clear that the strength of the heart comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because of, I have a strong iman, I have a strong taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you happen to see someone who is really depressed and not able to come out from their life, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah strengthen their heart. Respected brothers, I've heard a, a true story that happened in Saudi. Okay? And this is a true story about uh, a welfare center in Makkah and welfare center in Jeddah. And this welfare center, uh, they are the center where they take babies that are abandoned, babies that are just left on their own. So this centers, they collect babies that has been abandoned and so forth. So they have a center in, in, in Makkah and one in Jeddah. The one in Makkah is getting too crowded. So much of babies are coming in. So they decided to transfer some of the babies from Makkah to Jeddah. Okay. So what happens was, they did the transfer and there was a social worker who was in charge of some of the babies. And this social worker, she happened to see one of the child that came from Makkah that looks exactly the same as the one that is in Jeddah. And she, in her heart, had this gut feeling and these two babies must be identical twins. But the point is, one is from Jeddah and one is from Makkah. She couldn't do much. She checked the file, shouldn't get any details on it. Eventually, she pushed with her authority to do a DNA on both child and it matched. And it showed that both child are identical twins. Allahu Akbar. And what happened was, eventually, they got the address of one of the child and they traced back and went to the house. And they knocked at the door and a lady opened the door. And they asked that lady, uh, are you the owner of the house? She says, no, it's my mother. And I'm taking care of my mother. And she is paralyzed, bedridden, so I take care of the mother. Then the social worker asked, is there any other person who's living here? Uh, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Where's your husband? I don't know. The, the, the answer is, I do not know where my husband is. Do you have kids? She said, I had twins. Where's your husband? And this lady, she opens up. She says that my husband, he took my two boys, identical twins, to do circumstances. Khitam. Okay? He wanted to do the sunnah. He took my two boys away. And till today, I cannot reach him. And it looks like the case that she is a poor lady. She's been forced to marry a person who was of not a very good character due to some reason or so forth. And this guy cheated her and took the two babies away from her and just disappeared into the, from the area. And the social worker told her, if that is the case, let me bring you to a place. And she brought this lady to the hospital where the two identical twins were. And the one looked at it, subhanAllah, she started to cry. These are my babies. The whole group of nurses started to cry. And eventually, this social worker asked her, my sister, can you tell me, what was that special dua that you made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since the day you lost your two babies? And she said, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I gave my two boys. I put my trust. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I gave my two boys. And I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, it is in your hands that 
you protect them. And eventually, when I lost my two boys, I went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made this dua, Ya Allah, reunite me with my boys as how you re- re- reunited Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with his mother. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Reunite me with my boys as how you have reunited Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with his mother. Allahu Akbar. A beautiful dua. Because she is a person who has put her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has got knowledge, and she made a beautiful dua. And one of the criteria that our dua is accepted is to explain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the current condition that we are. As how Musa alayhi salam made a dua. Inni fakir. I am in need. I'm a person who is in need, ya Allah. Send me whatever goodness that you have. I'm a person in need. As for this lady, and she asked, Re- reunite me as how you have reunited the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to him. Subhanallah. This is the story that I just wanted to share. Respect to brothers. And it is important eh, that uh, the matters of heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we see or attend a grieving family who has lost someone, it's upon us to make dua that Allah strengthen their heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen their heart and make them move forward in their life. It's not just don't look down on people who are depressed. Make dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen their iman and taqwa. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who would benefit from the sharing. Wa billahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.